Well, hello there. Welcome to another exciting episode of the School of the Spirit. It's my joy to have you here again. I believe that if you have followed the previous episode so far, you've been blessed and edified and also that you have gained intelligence and understanding on some basic matters that affects the believer's work as far as the realm of the spirit is concerned. You know, I believe that the believer's journey is um, more or less like a school. We keep learning everything. We keep moving from one level of knowledge to the other. And the teacher, the tutor, is the Holy Spirit. Spirit of wisdom and understanding. The one that brings us into spiritual intelligence uh, to lubricate our work with God. And we've been dealing on this new episode that we titled Transformation by Prayer. Trying to examine all the stages of transformation that can occur in the life of a believer who actively and rightfully engages the place of prayer. Prayer and its importance is non-negotiable as far as the life of a believer is concerned. It's um, galvanized into uh, the frame of our reference. It's almost as if everything we do as believers is anchored around the ministry of prayers. Prayer becomes a force that propels almost every um, reality that manifests in our lives and in our walk with God. So let's pray to begin today. Father, grant us understanding, insight by your Spirit. Let us grow in spiritual intelligence tonight and let us be transformed. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So I started in the first episode of this series, uh, Transformation by Prayer, to talk about what prayer is all about and we tried to define transformation. We talked about, uh, we began talking about the different stages of transformation that could occur. Remember I said that transformation is a process that leads to change. The process that leads to the change of form in a life or in a thing. The life of an individual or a thing. The process that leads to the change of form. And Prayer is one of those forces that facilitates positive transformation as far as a believer's journey in God is concerned. Now, um, we started looking at the different stages. We talked about the heart stage, how prayer affects the heart and the transformation that happens at that level. We looked at the mental stage, uh, the transformation that occurs in the mind of an individual who actively engages uh, the place of prayer. So you could look down in the description box for that previous episode and get acquainted with everything that has been discussed there. And you see, uh, we've tried to ensure that these episodes are brief, they're concise, but um, highly detailed, and yet simple, simplified in such a way that everybody can understand and relate with and trying to be practical in our use of scripture um, to buttress the points that are made on the, this teaching. And I truly believe that if you are hungry for God, if you are hungry for the knowledge of God, these episodes will really, really bless and inspire you. We're going to talk about the third stage of transformation that occurs in the life of a believer through prayer. The third stage. I call it the energy stage, the energy stage. Of course, uh, basically energy is defined as the ability or the potential for work, the ability that is deployed for work to be done, uh, the potential that lets you know that a, a job, a work can be done, can be executed or carried out is energy. And we know that when we pray, uh, prayer 
is really that factor or that phenomenon that generates spiritual energy. It's a force, a spiritual force that generates spiritual energy. This spiritual energy can be deployed for spiritual work, can be deployed for um, uh, the workings of God's divine purpose in our life. Now, two things happen at this energy stage. First of all, higher levels of spiritual energy is generated when we pray. Remember, we're talking about transformation by prayer. Higher levels of spiritual energy as we engage in the momentum of prayer. Higher levels of spiritual energy. In other words, we keep going from one level of energy to the other. Now, you know, basically, in science, we are taught that energy is neither created nor destroyed, but it is converted from one level to the other. Energy occurs in different levels, and even in the realm of the spirit, uh, there are different levels or realms of operations in, in the spirit. And each of these realms are charged or powered by different energy levels. So you keep moving as per the realm of operation that you are in. You keep moving from one level of spiritual energy to the other. So one of the things that happens at the energy state is that different levels of spiritual energy are generated. And there are a few scriptures to back up this point. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, Paul lets us in on this mystery. He says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly far above all we ask or think, according to the power that is at work in us. The power at work in us is the potential, is the energy that can be deployed to execute spiritual tasks, to execute spiritual um, uh, um, work, as it were. The power at work in us, this spiritual energy. And it exists in different levels. In Romans 8.18, the Bible speaks of the glory that will be revealed in us and untapped dimension of spiritual energy that God has galvanized in our spirits. The Bible speaks of a time when this, it calls it glory, will be revealed. Such enormous and unpredictable amounts and levels of energy that can be translated and deployed into the fulfillment of God's purpose for our life. Just like you need, need physical energy to carry out physical work, you need spiritual energy to carry out spiritual work. So, in the place of prayer, we generate levels of spiritual energy. Higher as we pray. In Jude, Chapter 1, verse 20, you know, Jude has one chapter. In verse 20, if you read in the Amplified Translation, as a matter of fact, I think I should read it for us. So, we'll get a full import because it gives us a connotation of uh, what I mean when I say um, higher levels of spiritual energy is generated. Jude chapter 1, because it has just one chapter, verse 20. It says in the Amplified Translation, But you, beloved, build yourselves up, founded on your most holy faith, making progress, rise like an edifice, higher and higher, praying on the Holy Spirit. The moment he mentioned build, of course, you know that buildings are done levels after levels. In fact, they are called stories. Now it speaks about making progress by rising like an edifice. So you see, in the place of prayer, one of the, part of the transformation that we experience is that we keep generating higher levels of spiritual energy. So the more you pray, the higher the level of energy that is generated in your spirit. The more you pray, the more you pray, you keep going on 
like that on and on and on and on and on in fact this is the energy that jesus generated when he prayed on the mountain in luke chapter 9 verse 28 to 29 and the bible says to a point where the energy was so much that it altered his physical appearance so you keep generating so if you want to go from a high level of spiritual energy to a higher level then you need to constantly engage prayer so that that transformation can occur the second thing that happens under the energy stage is that we tap into the intelligence of divine creativity we tap into the intelligence of divine creativity there is artificial intelligence we know that it is used for machines um, in, in in these days when knowledge and innovation and tech technology has increased there is also natural intelligence the instincts of animals or human beings but there is also spiritual intelligence spiritual intelligence is the wisdom around uh, divine activity and one of those activity is God's divine creativity so we tap into the intelligence the wisdom that surrounds this glory to God we tap into the intelligence of divine creativity you know if all that happens in the energy state is that we just generate energy and that energy is not deployed to work then it's like starting up a generator and not using it for anything when energy is generated in your spirit it should and must be deployed into something that can uh, do work something that can produce results something that can produce an action or produce actions that are according to the energy that is generated so we tap into the intelligence of divine creativity and i'm going to mention a few people who tapped into this um, under the energy stage of transformation that occurs by prayer but first of all let's read two scriptures ephesians chapter 1 verses 17 and 18 paul speaks of praying for the ephesian church and the goal of his prayer was that they will be filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. This is what is responsible for creativity. He says that the eyes of their understanding, which is their mind, will be enlightened. You see, so that our understanding, our mind is enhanced, is upgraded, is, is charged by spiritual energy so we can comprehend things that are not natural things that are spiritual it says that you will know the hope of his calling the glorious riches of his inheritance in the saints that god has an inheritance in us that inheritance is there is the ability of god that dwells in us the energy of god that is in us that can be converted for several use it says and to know the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believes the same power that he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, the Bible says that we'll be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And when this happens, it says that we'll be able to walk worthy of the Lord. Walk, you see, walk is coming immediately after he prays that we are filled with, this, with, with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding so that we can walk so at the energy step, stage we tap into the intelligence spiritual intelligence if you may that um, is responsible for divine creativity in other words things that are only possible when humanity fuses with divinity supernatural acts that can only be manifested when humans are empowered by the realm of the supernatural now there are a few people in scripture who tapped into this intelligence and they used it to change 
their world. They used it to affect their civilization. And I'm going to share with you a few of them. First of all, one man that tapped into this was Isaac. Isaac, the son of Abraham. Isaac. In Genesis 26, you remember there was famine and Isaac wanted to move to another place. And God told him to remain in the land because that was the land that God had promised to his father and to him a future uh, descendants of his. And while Isaac remained in the land, in verse 12, the Bible says that Isaac sowed in that land. Remember, there was famine, means there was no rain. And that was an unproductive season. But Isaac sowed in that land and he reaped a hundredfold. And God blessed and prospered him till he was envied by the Philistines. How was it possible that Isaac was able to go against the natural limitation of famine? When there is famine, it means there is no rain. The dry season extended for a longer period of time. As a result, agriculture does not thrive. But the Bible says Isaac engaged in farming in a season of famine and he reaped a hundredfold. Now that was extremely supernatural. That could only be possible by divine creativity. If you read down Genesis 26, you will discover uh, the spiritual intelligence that Isaac operated with. The Bible says that Isaac dug the wells of his father. Now, in those days, especially because the land of the Philistines where Isaac was living uh, had slopes. They were, because the Bible called, it, that was the south of the Palestine, what you call the Palestine. So they were slopey because it kept going down. The topography of the land was, it kept descending till you get to the salt sea or the dead sea. So because of that, they would dig wells and then dig trenches for the waters that spring forth from, from this well to be channeled. And that was the technology that Isaac invented. He dug the wells of his father Abraham because Abraham had sojourned in that land years ago. You find that in Genesis chapter 20. So when he redug this well, water sprang forth from the ground and he was able to dig irrigation trenches and use the water from the ground to water the crops he had planted. If there was no rain coming from heaven, at least there was water that was captured, denied the surface of the earth. Isaac introduced that creativity by spiritual intelligence. He was able to tap into the intelligence for this level of creativity. And the Bible says the Philistines envied him. Small wonder the Bible says in that chapter that the Philistines will close some wells he dug, he will dig another well, they will close it. And when they saw that the phenomenon kept repeating itself, of course, the wells will open up with water because God had promised him that that was the land he was going to prosper. Then they knew that Isaac was walking, being supported by a force that was beyond the natural. How did Isaac get to know this? Isaac was a prayerful man. How do I know Isaac was prayerful? The Bible says in Genesis 25, in verse 20 and 21 and 22, that Isaac's wife was barren, Rebekah, and he prayed hard. And in, in message translation, that's how he puts it in verse 21, that Isaac prayed hard. And God answered his prayer and gave Rebekah children. In Genesis 24, when Rebekah was brought as a wife to Isaac, the Bible says Isaac was in the field meditating. Of course, meditation is an art that prayerful people always engage in. And he lifted up his eyes and he saw the camels coming. So Isaac had the habit of praying and meditating. And I believe in one of those moments, God spoke to him and gave him the technology that he used to prosper in a season of famine. Now think of it. When you tap into this energy stage of, you know, experiencing or working with the intelligence that governs divine creativity, you are able to suspend natural limitations. You are able to suspend natural laws. You are able to thrive in the midst of crisis situations. You are able to survive in the most extreme conditions. And we need this in our world today. Another person that tapped into this was Moses. How did Moses get the pattern for the tabernacle 
the Ten Commandments and many things that God revealed to him all the way from Exodus chapter 25 down to chapter 31. It was true prayers. When you read Deuteronomy chapter 9, verse 9, verse 18, and verse 25, it, Moses himself documented phases of prayer and fasting he undertook to be able to tap into this. Seasons of prayer and fasting where he would ascend the mountain and it was in those seasons of 40 nights and days of prayer and fasting that God was going to reveal to him the tabernacle, the pattern for the tabernacle that was built, the laws, the commandments and every other thing he brought down that governed Israel as a nation. Moses tapped into this powerful secret. You know, in Exodus 24 verse 18, the Bible says Moses ascended up to the mountain. I was there for 40 days. So you see, as we continue praying, our minds are enhanced and empowered by the energy that is generated from our spirits by the Holy Ghost. And we begin to tap into the intelligence that governs divine creativity. You need it for your life. You need it for your business. You need it for your ministry, for your church. One good idea does not just do it. You need the intelligence that sponsors divine creativity. Where natural laws are suspended and supernatural laws are introduced to occasion an advantage for you in the earth realm. Moses was one man who tapped into it. Joseph too tapped into it in Genesis 41. How did he? He, he had interpreted the king's dream quite all right. Seven seasons of famine and harvest was going to come. But then what was the solution in the season of famine? And then by the wisdom and the intelligence of divine creativity, Joseph provided a solution that saved not only Egypt, but many nations. As a matter of fact, even saved the nation of Israel. Because had it not been for Moses' wisdom, or for Joseph's wisdom, I beg to say, Israel and all his children would have died in Canaan and there would have been no hope of a savior again. Joseph tapped into that energy to create. Another man that tapped into it was Jesus. When he fed the 5,000 men with five loaves and two fishes. Now in Mark's account, in Mark chapter 6 verse 38 to 44, in Mark's own account, um, the Bible spoke about a sharing formula that Jesus used. When Jesus realized they had just five loaves of bread and two fishes, Jesus told the disciples to tell the people to sit down, first of all, and brought orderliness. And he, then he made them to sit down in hundreds and in fifties. I believe that was how they were able to approximately get the number that there were 5,000 men. And then... You know, obviously five loaves and, of bread and two fishes. God multiplied it and fed 5,000 men. Now the Bible says that there were 12 baskets remaining. I believe, it's not written, but I believe that there were probably 12,000 or more people. Maybe one basket multiplied to feed a thousand. Because usually when it says 5,000 men, it means that the number of women and children will be more. You see, the miracle that happened there, the, mirror, the multiplication of the bread and fish were miracles. Quite all right. However, the sharing formula and the arrangement had to be by a wisdom that was beyond the natural. Because had they not been ranked in that, you know, in that number, had, they, had, they, had that level of order not been you know, imposed, even if the bread and fish was multiplied, it may still not have gone round. I believe that. So Jesus was a man, and of course we know that Jesus was a man of prayer. Almost always praying. The Bible will often say in Luke chapter 5 verse 16 that he will withdraw himself to pray. In Mark chapter 1 verse 35, the Bible says early in the morning before dawn, he would you know, retreat to a solitary place to pray. And that was where he interacted with the wisdom and intelligence of the Spirit of God. And he brought about divine creativity. He was dexterous in his art of ministry. Even in the answering of the questions of the scribes and the Pharisees. We need, we need to tap into this dimension of 
the energy stage of transformation that occurs in prayer because we are in a world filled with problems right now and every system in society is trying to profess solutions but we know that society in itself is limited because they are bounded by laws of science and physics and technology and all of these things that are within the three-dimensional world but we operate from a world that is superior we operate from the supernatural realm of the spirit which is above superior and beyond this realm and so we need to learn to employ the energy from that realm deploy it into divine creativity and see god suspend natural laws to bring about miracles because that's what miracles are a suspension of natural laws and limitations introducing the supernatural we need to tap into this more often paul was a man who tapped into this uh intelligence and i believe it was through this that he wrote one third of the new testament Paul was a man of prayer. In 1 Corinthians 14, verse 15, Paul said, I will pray with the Spirit and will pray with my understanding. In verse 18, he said, I speak with tongues more than ye all. Paul was a man that was always given to prayer. He always spent time with God. There were moments in his life where the Bible would capture him praying. And from his prayer, God would bring a revelation that will alter their ministerial journeys or that will give them direction on what to do. And I believe it was through this that Paul was able to download the revelations that wrote about one third of the New Testament. You know, he said in, in 2 Timothy 3, 16, that all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. And inspiration is an activity of the Holy Spirit that is generated in the place of prayer. If you begin to pray more often, you would generate the energy that commands divine inspiration and once divine inspiration steps in you have entered god's creative mode you have entered the divine creativity mode and you begin to see god fabricate things ideas and, and, and things that are beyond the natural to bring excellence and to bring advancement in your life and here's something I want you to hear that I wrote down before we close. The ability to tap into spiritual intelligence and divine creativity is a dire need in these last days. It's a dire need. The ability to tap into spiritual intelligence and divine creativity is a dire need. In Dan Daniel 12 verse 4, the Bible says, knowledge will increase in the last days. As the church, I believe, the church, must be an institution in the last days. That's my belief. My conviction is the church has come to a point where they must arise as an institution in these last days. And to be an institution and a force that society must acknowledge and reckon with, we must be able to deploy the energy of divine creativity to the same. Our prayers must transform us to a point where it empowers us to transform the world around us. There should be an end to why we pray. Go on at the days where we just pray and make a lot of noise and show people that we pray. No, there must be solutions. Our prayers must be solution driven. Our prayers must produce answers. Our prayers must occasion advantages for us on the earth. Our prayers must bring about the deployment of divine wisdom, divine energy, divine creativity to see that God uses us to bring solution to the problems that the world is facing. The Bible says that we shall arise and shine because our light has come. It says, though darkness will cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but God will arise upon us. How will it arise on us? It will arise on us by bringing us to the place where we tap into the energy that is commanded by transformation in prayer. Where we are able to deploy the energy of God to bring about divine creativity, to bring about divine solutions, not only to the situation that befalls mankind, but also to the glorification of the church. Remember, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 3, that to the intent that the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to principalities and powers. Jesus will be glorified in this day and time through the church. 
by the excellence of divine wisdom that we will produce, that we will bring to the scene, that we will bring on the stage. That's what will set us apart from the world systems and make for our exaltation and our glorification. And friend, if you are listening to me right now, God wants to see you move in that God mode, in that energy mode, tapping into that energy that is commanded by the transformation of prayer. I'd like to pray for you that in the name of Jesus Christ, may God bring you to a point in your prayer where you begin to tap into spiritual energy, higher levels of spiritual energy that will command greater levels of manifestation higher levels of divine creativity by the intelligence of the Spirit. Go and rule your world. Make changes that will bring glory to Jesus. Turn around situations in your life and walk in dominion in this season. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you and thank you for staying tuned. i see you in the next episode. We're still talking about transformation by prayer. Shalom.